All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HP TV, coming to our Detroit. Back with another video, Wednesday morning, after the debate. Can't say it was a great debate. It was mediocre, at best. Even, Tim, even J.D. Vance was mediocre. Tim Watts was a joke. Now, the reason I say this, and this is a reaction video, actually. I'm going to do a reaction to Anton Daniels' video where he's going to go into the economic aspects in his views of the video. I mean, of the debate. Me, I'm analyzing this entire thing because there is an issue that we ignore. And I've been running into it in a lot of debates. When I see somebody who's a Democrat and they say, well, how can you not support Kamala? And then I say, well, Kamala is for gender reassignment of children on an elementary school level. Then I say, Tim Wants is for putting tampons in the boys' bathroom. And he had the most liberal laws relating to pregnancy. Then you look at how it's to come out. You don't even know who Kamala really is. It seems that she's lied about everything about who she actually is. You know, we know that her so-called father was a devout Marxist. So when you look at her say she's going to give gender reassignment to prisoners at the taxpayer's expense on top of gender reassignment for children. Why would you vote for that? Why would you vote for a late term termination of pregnancy? Why would you vote for that? Why would you vote for a consistently open border and amalgamation with immigrants and criminals from all over the world? Why would you vote for that? And I think J.D. Vance should have hammered in on those real cultural and social issues because this country is already deplorable. It's the Babylon of revelations. It's like ancient Rome. It's full of debauchery. So you got to ask, what are y'all really voting for? Okay, you got the never Trumpers. I don't vote for Trump. I don't like Trump. What do you like about Kamala and Walsh? Because that's weird to me. When I talk to a grown man my age, and they say, well, I'm voting Democrat. Why? You're voting for the gender reassignment of your grandchildren, the destruction of your legacy, the destruction of your community, your country, because a woman appears to have melanin. She appears to be a person of color. So you would hand your children over to Satan you will follow these demons into your destruction. How many of you out there even believe in God? Because a vote for the Democratic Party is a vote against God, Scripture, and righteousness. Their whole platform, how they've been even marketing their campaign to you. Kamala Harris goes to Atlanta, brings out Megan the Stallion to twerk. Then she comes to another city, brings out Little John and say, turn up. Tim Watts flipping people the bird, lying about his military service. Who does that? With all the veterans that they're leaving homeless for the migrants. To even vote for them seems treasonous. It seems traitorous to me. It seems diabolical that you can't see who you really voting for. Do you think Kamala Harris' husband, with his international ties, is not going to be influencing policy. If you're a man out there and your wife is the president, you're not going to be influencing policy. So here you have her married to this Jewish man with ties to Israel, and you think he's not going to be influencing her policy as it relates to the Middle East. That's crazy. And then you look at 
Rashida Tlaib here in Detroit, and you look at uh, the old, other lady from the, from Somalia, Omar, this country is being turned over by the Democratic Party to globalists and foreign nationals on top of the debauchery that they're introducing to your community. And you have the nerve to criticize somebody who says, I'm not going to vote for them. What do you care about? I look at the crime that they say is going down, which is a lie. Thousands of convicted criminals with heinous crimes have just entered into this country. And crime is through the roof. They're just not reporting certain crimes. You know, when you look at the case of Nazaria Harris in Detroit, terrible. But you got these Pan-Africanists and these uh, black and black people. They only get mad if a white person or police unalives black Americans. But black Americans are losing their lives every day to violent crime. Every day. And that gets no attention because it doesn't serve the race baiting narrative. There's a problem in this country and the problem is hatred. Hatred of righteousness, hatred of God, hatred of the Bible is sickening. It's way deeper than the political policies that they put in front of you because there's something sinister behind the whole agenda as it relates to us as human beings. And I don't think people want to have that conversation. Think about that. Tim Wall saying that if a child is born while it was trying to be terminated, the doctor has no uh, reason to assist in the child. That's horrible. Termination of a pregnancy all up to the eighth month. That's horrible. Reassigning the gender to your children. That's horrible. In all, because a woman who's been a Hindu up until she wanted to run for president is swaying the community and dividing the community. And she picks Tim Walsh, Tampon Tim, as a running mate. And you still can't decide which side that you on. We in trouble, people. We in trouble. Now, I'm not going to talk your ear off because I want to do this reaction because I want Anton to give you the economic aspect of it. We ain't even talking about the spiritual and the moral that I was talking about. Look at what he's saying. This is for fair uses under the 1976 Copyright Act. Education and commentary and the First Amendment. Look at what he says about the politics. Walls, you said you were in Hong Kong during the deadly Tiananmen Square protests in the spring of 1989. But Minnesota Public Radio and other media outlets are reporting that you actually didn't travel to Asia until August of that year. Can you explain that discrepancy? Give yeah, well, answer. and to the folks out there who didn't get at the top of this, look, I uh, I grew up in small rural Nebraska, a uh, town of 400. My community no. You see he's doing the same thing as Kamala? She asked him a plain question. Why did you lie about being in active combat? And he goes right back to, I grew up in a middle-aged family, and we were working. You know what? But guess what? I grew up in a middle-class family. My father worked at Ford Motor Company. My mother worked as a librarian. But I'm not going to get up in here in front of you and lie. And then when you call me out on my lie, I get to talking about my father's work experience. This is all spin. Because he's never going to address the lie. Watch. It was who I am. They saw where I was at. They... Look, I, I will be the first to tell you, I have poured my heart into my community. I've tried to do the best I can, but I've not been perfect, and I'm a knucklehead. No. Why did you lie about your military service is the question. 
See, he can't answer and tell you the real reason why he lied. So he's going to try to act like he's like you. He's not like us. This is a person they saying is like a, a father figure. My father never said anything to me about tampons. When I was a kid, and had, we used to have to go to the store to get them. You'd be looking around and hope don't nobody even see you picking up the box. Because we had shame back then. My father going to get them was out the question. After I was born. I don't know who was getting, going to the store for my mother before I was born. But when I was in a little... Go get a newspaper and grab your mama some woody, some, some tampons. That was always a woman thing. See, our values are being undermined by these people. Think about him. He's not answering the question about why he lied. At times, but it's always been about that. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So I was in Hong Kong and China during the democracy protest went in. And from that, I learned a lot of what needed to be in, in governance. What's going on is anti- did you look at this liar trying to get out of the line? I, 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 I have no excuse. You caught me. I misspoke. You didn't misspoke, you lied. Like when Kamala said that she was being bused to schools during segregation when the whole time she was living in Canada. On top of all the type of lies they tell, think about their policies. Think about his liberal policies. Late term termination of pregnancy, gender reassignment of children. How could this not be stressed to you? A person who you don't even know her identity, who's been cosplaying as a black American to get the black vote. These things never came out in the debate. The things that spiritual people, people that follow the Bible and God, none of their questions was answered because they played politics. But think about, at the same time, the dock workers are all on strike. So there's going to be another food shortage. Hillary Clinton is coming out talking about there will be a black swan event. North Carolina and parts of the South are flooded underwater, right now waiting on FEMA. Iran just entered into a war. You got three wars going on right now. Where is your president? And his representative is out here cause playing. I'm from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. This is a debate recap, so to speak, and I want to get my thoughts off fresh. So I just got done watching the debate. We streamed it on After Hours with my friends Carrie and Quentin and Slimmy, and it was actually a really good debate. I enjoyed it because it was kind of like not talking points, but more specifically deep diving into philosophy, policy, and why it makes sense for the voters to vote the way that they're going to vote, regardless of who it is that you choose. Now, we have a stark difference, but this was one of the rare debates where you see more commonality than... You've seen differences, but the differences between the candidates really based off of their philosophy and how. Now, see, this is why I disagree with Anton. We didn't see commonality because they really weren't addressing the issues that the conservatives and the people on the right have a problem with. They have a problem with the fact that the Democratic Party wants to say God is wrong to play God with our children while at the same time undermining our economy through immigration. And at the same time, they are lying to us and we keep seeing these cat catastrophes in this country. And you got Hillary talking about there's going to be a black swan event. Be in October, they say this month, something that never has happened that we don't expect is going to happen. This is what they're predicting. 
after we've already seen two attempts on the presidential candidate. They didn't address none of the things that I wanted to hear. J.D. Vance didn't ask him the, the, the question, the real question. What are you guys' plans with this liberal agenda of gender reassignment, late-term abortions, and shutting that border? Because Kamala Harris can shut the border right now. They can shut the border right now. How are y'all going to even vote for people who are telling you, I'm going to fix it if you vote for me, but you're the one that's broken and you in the office right now. Why not? What is they would propose to govern. Now, before I get into the debate itself, <clears throat> let me preface this by saying that I believe that the vice presidential debate, unlike any other time in history, is more important than ever before because it's the first time in our lifetime that it matters who is the vice president to the general public. It's always mattered whether or not we pick the right vice president or the right candidate, but it matters for a couple different reasons. Number one, I think that the vice presidential pick is also a reflection of the leadership style and whether or not a person has the ability to pick the right person as far as president of the United States of America. And in this area, I believe that Trump shines. J.D. Vance, by far, was way ahead of Tim Walls. Going into this, and I just appeared on Fox News and I was talking with Lauren Ingram, the question was, how far was he above Tim Walls and how much smarter or how wise was he and his ability to really be able to expose Tim Walls' flaws, which I believe he did. And you probably seen that in the beginning of this when we showed that little gaffe and Tim Walls getting caught up and not being able to answer the question. But the point was, was that we all know, and he basically confirmed, J.D. Vance that is, that he was by far and large the most superior candidate on that stage tonight, and it wasn't even close. But let me not say that Tim Walls did not hold his own, because surprisingly, America's dad, as they try to brand him, he absolutely held his own. How can he be America's dad? The man who mandated tampons in a boy's bathroom? He could never be my dad. He could never be... A man who lies about his military service, a man who was a commander, a leader in the military. Soon as his troops go to war, he jumps out and let them go fight without him, then lies about his service. Really? That sounds like a coward and a weirdo. Who's claiming him as they dead? What Americans? If you, somebody who in the comment who thinks Tim, Tim Walsh is America's dad, please say you think he's America's dad in the comment so we can address that. In the beginning, he was doing well, and it was almost like he had a puncher's chance and he was playing defense. And he was really doing his thing and he was fighting and he was pushing. And he was shoving and he was trying to punch back. And I think that he was doing a good job and articulating himself and trying to stay on point and stand on task. But it was when the moderators, not even J.D. Vance, it was when the moderators pressed him and forced him to answer a question that he tried to dodge, which Kamala Harris often at times gets away with. But Tim Walls was not able to get away with it at this point because they forced him to answer the question. And that's when he got caught up. And from there, I think that he, he did all right. He did. He, he held his own. But it was a stark difference between the two, and I like to compare them to basketball teams, right? J.D. Vance was the Warriors with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and KD. I mean, he was all offense. Didn't even have to play no defense. It was all gas, no breaks. Tim Walls tried to play a little bit of offense, and if I had to compare him as far as maybe selecting an NBA team, and I haven't thought about this prior to actually having this conversation with you guys, I would say maybe he was the injured calves, the ones where 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 Jr. You know what I'm saying? Jr. Smith went in and he grabbed it and he ran back out instead of laying it back up. 
I think that he was that calf scene, maybe. I don't know. If I just had to guess, it's right off the back. But he was woefully unprepared to deal with the onslaught that J.D. Vance had. No matter how much he prepared and no matter how many talking points that he tried to use in order to drum up Kamala Harris, it was just not enough. And the thing that I think that J.D. Vance really shined on was his pressing over the immigration policy that Kamala Harris and the Biden administration created that ultimately led us to the space that we're in now. And he was so masterful at it, not only when they asked him the questions with regards to immigration, but he was masterful in bringing it back to it to relate it to every other part of the economy. For example, when they talked about economic policy, he broke down how immigration vastly undercut your ability to be able to own a home because they, Americans, everyday Americans are now competing with an additional 21 million people that are in the market for rental properties as well as trying to purchase a home. And which we do now see, for example, we've seen the first Venezuelan family now able to purchase a home over in Chicago, which was helped by the church and other incentives, tax incentives from the federal government. And so now when you see the Springfields and you see the infrastructure being pulled upon and the teachers being pulled upon and the hospitals being pulled upon and the accidents that's in that county, it's not built for an influx of 20,000 people flown into the country under the Harris-Biden administration. And I think that he also masterfully pointed out why should she get a promotion to do the job that she's created, the problems that she's created to then solve for, and what makes you think that you're going to get anything different than what you currently experience it. He was great. He was masterful. I would probably give his performance maybe an A or an A minus because I don't think that we've seen anybody communicate as well, at least from the vice presidential or maybe the presidential debates. I don't think that we've seen anybody communicate as well as J.D. Vance. It was it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. But more importantly, it shows you the stark differences when communicated properly between Republicans and Democrats. Tim Walls passed off a bunch of different stuff. And I will give J.D. Vance credit, even though he made sure that he pressed the moderators to let him answer a specific question and add additional context. Tim Walls passed off some stuff that I pointed out, and I think that J.D. Vance, one of the things that he also let him do is, not only did he correct him and fact check him, but he also let him, let him talk himself into a corner. And if you were paying attention and you watched the entire debate, which I know a lot of people don't necessarily do, because we got short attention spans, one of the things that Tim Wall said, for example, was that we shouldn't determine what books are what, what's being put in books that our children are reading. Now, again, I will give Tim Wall's credit and that he played to his strengths. He talked about, you know, the health care system over in Minnesota, and he tried to really, really hammer home the point and point out different examples that we couldn't in real time fact check because we were so in, in trans and we were trying to pay attention to the debate. Sorry. Been a long day. Got to give me a second because I'll be cooking up. Uh, he pressed on the different names and stuff of all of these people as far as the reproductive rights issue. And he tried to play into people's emotions over something that we know that you can control because most people, most people have no problems trying to figure out whether or not a woman can or can't control her own body because I ain't got to worry about that because I ain't going to put a baby in you out of wedlock in the first place. So they used the extreme examples in order to play, play upon the emotions of the American people. And I think that that maybe worked, but I think that most people also went into this trying to confirm what it is that they're already going to vote for, which is, are you voting for the Republican Party or are you voting for the Democratic Party? And in that space, if you if you were on the fence, because, again, the vice presidential debate mattered more in this year than any other time because of what we just witnessed with Kamala Harris being pressed upon us and not having a debater way onto the stage to become the to become the candidate and then be selected by the Democratic National Convention and its participants, right? She was given to us. She didn't have to earn her nomination. She didn't. She the last debate that she had uh, for you know in her primary, Tulsi Gabbard just absolutely destroyed her, and that's a fact. Nobody can debate that at all. And so what I see and how I see things play out is that. The reason why more people were tuned in and people absolutely thought that this was an important conversation is because the vice presidential candidate, especially when you're talking about the fact that J.D. Vance brought up the fact that she cast a tie-breaking vote that ultimately caused a lot, a lot of this inflation that we see in society today, what have you done over the last three and a half years that people can expect differently? 
I don't think that there's nothing that you can do. But again, it was very entertaining. It was a debate that I was looking forward to more than any of them. Uh, I'm curious as to what y'all think. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon link is in the description. Also, teach Haley 40% off your first order plus 20% off of life. And it Shout out to Anton Daines from Detroit. I disagree. I disagree with a lot he said about the content of the debate. Because at this point, we really have to understand that this is about good and evil. Clearly, the policies coming out of the Democratic Party are wicked. I'm going to say it again. Late term termination of pregnancy all the way up until the seventh, eighth month. Gender reassignment for children. Think about that. Taxpayer money for gender changes of prisoners. Open borders. Money going from American citizens to support and build up a new migrant community. Censorship of the First Amendment. And the only reason you don't want to vote conservative is because you hate Trump. You don't hate the devil. You don't hate wickedness. You don't hate evil. You don't like a person's character. And that makes you go against your religion, God, and country. While you see the most wicked and evil crimes playing out every day in your communities and in your country. I think people know deep in their heart what they're voting for. And I think the evil that they've done and the shame of what they've done can be covered and hidden in a democratic ran government where everything is liberal and everything is right. As long as it's inclusive. I wasn't impressed. So it's early Wednesday morning. This is just my take on the debate. Sam, you are Detroit. This is Detroit's HPTV. I'm coming to you from the city. Support the nonprofit, Detroit's Black Thought and Ash Collective. The cash app is in the description. As always, salute to all the patriots out there. And keep your head on swivel. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.